Good evening. I want to give God praise for another special day that the Lord God had made. I want to thank Him because it is by grace that I'm still here. It is by grace that we all are still alive today. We're not better off than those that are, are gone, but we still want to thank God for His grace. I, I, I am grateful for His grace and His mercy that is over and that is upon my life as well. This evening, I want to thank you for the privilege yet again of coming into your home, into your space. I am always grateful that you give me this opportunity to come into your space, into your home, to share one or two things with you. I will always say this, and now I'm going to say it again. I'm not ashamed to say it, to admit it. I am not a God expert. I don't have absolute knowledge of the Word of God. The little that I know is the little that I'm quite prepared to, to share. Uh, this evening, I'm reaching you from London. I'm still in London, in UK, a beautiful city. I know God has given us the grace to, to, to witness uh, a, a day like this, so I am I'm thankful. Before I go into sharing one or two things that the Lord will, uh, will have me share, I want us to uh, to pray. I like praying. I have done my prayers this morning. I've, I've studied the scriptures this morning as, as well. I love praying. I love studying the scriptures. It doesn't matter what your situation is. Don't let your prayer habit go. Uh, don't, 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 don't let the scripture go. You got to, you got to uh, make our time to study the Bible, the Word of God. The Word, word of God is still relevant today. It doesn't matter what any, anyone uh, says. The, the prayer is still the key today. I don't know your level of burden. I don't know your level of sorrow, but there's every need for us to pray. There's every need for us to study the Word of God and allow the Word of God to uh, go through us. Uh, uh, the, the, the Word of God will go through you if you submit uh, yourself to, 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 to the Spirit of the Lord. So thank you so much for allowing me into your space. It is a privilege. The, the words you will hear from me you may like like the words or you may not like them, but if you like what you hear from me, please share. Share. Um, that's okay. So okay. You don't need my permission to, to share it. If, if, if it's not for you, do share it also. It may be uh, for somebody, maybe a blessing uh, for, for somebody. Bless somebody with it. Bless somebody with it. We know that our world is, is, is in a difficult place. The word of God is still there to suit. Our, our pain to, to restore our hope. So I'm going to challenge you to keep hope alive. Uh, I want to thank God for you. So let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for a special day like this. I want to thank you because your word remains relevant. Your word is the most relevant word today. I want to thank you for the grace that you have given to me to be alive in the land of, of the living. I want to thank you for my family. I want to bless you, Lord God, for the Church of God all over the world. I want to thank you for the Church of God in Brazil. I want to thank you for the ministers in Brazil. I want to thank you for the Church of God in Bolivia. I want to thank you for the Church of God in China. I want to thank you for the Church of God in Nigeria, in Ghana, in South Africa, in Saudi Arabia, in Kuwait. Lord God, I want to thank you for the Church of God in America, in UK, in Poland. I want to thank you for the Church of God in, in in Jamaica. I want to thank you, Lord God, for the gospel being preached in India. I bless your name. Lord God, forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled, and it is settled, Lord God. Master, you have never lost a battle. Master, there is nothing, no one to be compared with you. From everlasting to everlasting, you will remain God. You were God yesterday. You are God today. You are God even in the now. And you will remain God even tomorrow. And I am grateful, Lord God, to be chosen of you, to be called your own. I am grateful, Lord God, to be where you want me to be. I am grateful, Lord God, for you to find me worthy, Lord God, even to let your spirit dwell in me and to use me to encourage your people all around the world. I am grateful. And Father, my God, in the name of Jesus, I cover this message this evening with the precious blood of Jesus, the, the, the blood that still says better things, that the blood that is better, stronger, 
than the blood of Abel, the blood that heals, the blood that restores, the blood that cleanses. That's the blood of Jesus. Wherever the pain is now, I release the blood. Wherever there is worry and sorrow, I release the blood of Jesus. Lord God, I put the blood of Jesus in our homes. I inject my listeners, those who are watching me now, with the blood of Jesus. Their marriages I inject with the blood of Jesus, their sons, their daughters, their children, their wives, husbands, in-laws, grandchildren, their environment. I surround a mass in the blood of Jesus. Lord God, the Bible says that we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. I testify that Jesus is Lord. I testify that Jesus died and rose again for me. I testify that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. I believe with my heart the Lord Jesus. I confess with my mother the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that that raised him from the dead. And I declare that I'm saved. Father, in the name of Jesus this evening, if there be any watching, Lord God, who may be ill, Lord God, in Jesus' name, I release healing. In the name of Jesus, if there be any, Lord God, watching, who may be struggling, Lord God, to make ends meet, Lord God, I command the end to meet in that person's favor in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for Israel. I pray for Jerusalem, the city of David. Pray, Lord God, that you will protect the city of David, Jerusalem. I pray, Lord God, that you will protect the Jews all over the world. You will protect the nation of Israel, even as you have covenanted with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are a covenant-keeping God. And Lord God, stand, King of glory. Arise, O Lord God, and let the enemies be scattered. Those, Lord God, that persecute Israel, your people. Jehovah, Lord God, contain with them that contained against your own. I pray for the church, O Lord God. Jehovah, Lord God, them that persecute the church. I ask, Lord God, that our God will, will, will arise and let the enemies be scattered. Jehovah, Lord God, give them Genesis 11 experience. Confuse the enemy, Lord God. Confuse their languages, King of Glory, those that are planning, King of Glory, to put the church of God out of their nations, out of their cities, Lord God. Those that are persecuting believers, Lord God, those that believe in you. Jehovah, Lord God, arise. Contain with them, fight their battles, King of Glory. Lord God, as they repent, King of Glory, I ask you to show mercy in the name of Jesus. I pray for that pastor right now. I pray for the pastor's wife. I pray for that brother, that sister. Lord God, I pray for that brother now. Master, that may be struggling. King of Glory, I pray for that brother, that sister, that may be in debt. I pray for that brother, that sister right now who... King of glory may have lost a loved one to COVID-19. Lord God, restoration, reassurance, King of glory, repair, King of glory, replace, replenish. Do whatever it takes, King of glory, to bring joy to wherever the joy has left. To bring happiness, King of glory, to wherever happiness is lacking. To bring calm, King of glory, where there is chaos. To bring understanding, to bring reconciliation, to bring love, wherever there is hate, King of glory, in the name of Jesus. I begin to rebuke you, spirit of cancer. I rebuke you, heart attack. I rebuke you, yes, high blood pressure, typhoid, whatever you may be, coronavirus, fever, headache, migraine. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Near success syndrome, poverty, poverty mentality. I rebuke you, blood sucking demons. Yes, I rebuke you, car crash, plane crash. Train crash, I rebuke you, building collapse, I rebuke you, stabbing, shooting, arm robbery, political assassination, I rebuke you, strong man of the universe, I rebuke you, agents of darkness, witches, wizards, witchcraft, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, spirit of poverty, spirit of lack, stingy spirit, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I say in Jesus' name that the blood of Jesus is against you. The name of the Lord is against you. The word of God is against you, Satan. And the spirit of the Lord is against you. Yes, I plead divine immunity over my life, over the life of my wife, my family, our church, church members. I plead divine immunity over the life of the followers of Jesus Christ all over the world. Lord God, I cover us once again with the blood of Jesus. I raise an hedge round about us, Lord God. I remind you, King of glory, 
that when you place the hedge round about Job, the enemy was not able to penetrate Job until you pulled your hand back. Jehovah Lord God, I raise the same hedge round about the believers all over the world. I pray, King of Lord, for Muslim communities that they will know you, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for the Hindu communities that they will know you, Lord God, the only God, the truth, the way maker, the I am that I am, the ancient of days, the El Shaddai, that they will know you, Lord God, that they will come to the knowledge of the truth. I want to thank you, Lord God, for the privilege one more time. I will not cease thanking you for another beautiful day that you have made, that you have given to me. Let me declare, Lord God, that it is well with the church. Let me declare, Lord God, that it is well with that business. It is well with that marriage. It is well with the UK. It is well with Israel. It is well with Jerusalem. It is well with America. It is well with Nigeria. It is well with Africa. I command Africa to be fruitful. I command Africa to multiply. I command Europe to, to be fruitful. I command Europe to know Jesus Christ. I command the Caribbean to be fruitful. I command all the continents of the world to be fruitful, to know Jesus. And I declare that Jesus is Lord of all the continents. It doesn't matter what anybody says. Lord God, the eighth is of the Lord and the fullness thereof. Because the eighth is of the Lord, all the continents, Lord God, are of the Lord. Jesus, take control. I thank you, Lord God for this wonderful time to share your word with your own. In Jesus' name, I want you to join me to say amen and amen and amen. I want to thank you so much for joining me. Please, please share this. Share this if you feel led to share it. Please do not hesitate. Share it. Share it. Share it. That's fine. I, I, I'm okay if you share it. Um, share it. That's fine. It is okay. Thank you so much for tuning in to to, 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 to encourage me this evening as you tune in, I get encouraged. Today, I'm going to share something that I have uh, 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 titled Due Season. Due Season. Due Season. I want, I want to take us to, 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 to the book of uh, uh, Galatians chapter, chapter 6 verse 9. Let's go. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Galatians. 6 verse 9. I have my Bible in my hand. So we are going to do a little bit of Bible study today before I join our church in prayer meeting. If, 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 if you're in London, please do, do join our prayer meeting this evening. Our church is called Greater Love Assembly. We are in Forest Gate in East London. Forest Gate is in East London. We're in a place called Donning Hall Complex, Elm Grove, off Woodgrange uh, Road. The, the, the postcode is E79AB. So try and join us this evening uh, for prayer meeting. Amen. God bless you, Sister Joanna. God bless you for joining us again. Please share this. Share this on watch party, whatever it is called. Share it. Yes. Uh, Galatians 6 verse 9. It says, And let us not be weary in way doing. I'm reading from King James. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And let us, it's talking about the church, the believers in Christ, let us not be weary in way doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And let us not be weary in way doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So the Bible is clear. The Bible is very direct, very specific on this on this subject. It says, let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season. So I want to talk about due season. When the Bible talks about due season, what exactly is the Lord trying to tell us? For in due season, you shall reap. There's got to be due season. There's got to be your reaping period. And there's got to be a moment not to faint. Challenges will come your way that will make you faint. In other words, stop doing the right thing. The challenge will be to make you stop doing the, the right thing, make you stop showing love, make you stop forgiving people. The Bible says, in due season you shall reap if you faint not. If you don't stop persevering, you will reap, you will benefit. If you don't stop giving, you will, you will reap, you will benefit. If you don't stop serving Jesus, 
you will benefit, you will enjoy his blessings. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in this season we shall reap if we faint not. Galatians 6, 9. Seasons are like opportunities. Seasons are like opportunities. They will come. If you don't grab them, if you don't harness, harness them, if you don't welcome opportunities, if you don't prepare for, for such moments, they will come and they will go. Some of us are sitting on opportunities because we don't know the season that we are in, we let the opportunity go. The Bible says in due season. So what does it mean in due season? When reality knocks on your door, when your blessing is made manifest, when you receive the answer to your prayer, that is the due season. When all your efforts come good, that's your due season. I am going to prove it to us uh, 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 this evening. Please bear, uh, bear with me. Like I said, if this message is not for you, that's okay. But do share it. Do encourage somebody. I don't know who I'm going to encourage this evening. Uh, we are in, in uncertain times. We are in, in strange times. A, a, a lot of people are getting discouraged. Some folks are getting depressed. I don't want you to get discouraged. Jesus is still Lord. I don't want you to, to, to get depressed. Jesus is still Lord. He still loves you. Keep hope alive. You are yet in your due season. Now, now in, under, in, in, in understanding seasons, I, 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 have, I, I, I want us to know the, the essence, the importance of understanding seasons. Because if you don't understand seasons, you, you may not know the timing of it. You got to understand seasons to understand the timing of it as to tap into it at the right time. What am I talking about? Seasons come and go. Let's say, let me put it this way. For those of us that are abroad, you witness uh, winter and summer, autumn uh, uh, and spring. If you don't understand winter time, you will dress as if you are in the summertime and you suffer the consequence. So that's what I mean by understanding the season and the timing of it and getting ready for it and taking the opportunity once the opportunity presents itself. I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, uh, I'm talking about biblical opportunities, the opportunities that God uh, will bring our way. I'm not talking about smash and grab where, where you, you, are, you are walking on the street and you see somebody's mobile phone hanging out and you say, oh, the preacher preached that I should take opportunities. You see somebody's mobile phone. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. Or, or you go and see where, where people displayed expensive watches or ju jewelries. You use your hammer and smash the place up and steal and run away. I used to, I had a preacher say I should take opportunities. That's not what I'm talking about. The Bible says that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow with it. I'm talking about the opportunities that God will present to us in our due season. Somebody say amen to that. Now, in understanding three seasons, I have I have I have broken seasons down into three because I want to I want to narrow it. I want to group it so that it, to help us understand where we are. In, in, in the things of the spirit and in the things of, uh, of the natural. The, the, the spiritual will always control the natural. So, so if the spiritual is not working well for you, check. If the natural is not working well for you, check the spiritual. It may be that you are spiritually connected, disconnected to your source. Let me say that again. If the natural is not working well for you, check the spiritual. It may be that you are spiritual spiritually disconnected to your source. What am I talking about? God is your source. If it's not working well right now, ask yourself a question, where am I with God? If something is broken, it needs to be fixed. God will stand at a place waiting for you to get back to, to shape, get back in line and fix the broken pieces of your life before you can move, move on. So if it is not working out physically, check yourself spiritually and find out if there is an alignment to be done, if there is an, a, a, an adjustment to be done. Amen to that. So in, in talking about seasons, I have broken seasons down uh, into three places. The, the, the first season, first season that you must go through, whether you believe it or not, whether you like it or not, is what I call your preparatory season. Your preparatory season is important. It is the beginning of every move that you make. 
It is the beginning of every step that you take. It's the beginning of everything that you do. Preparatory season is your number one season to look to look out for, to look up to, to, to tackle. If you don't tackle your preparatory season, every other thing will just will just will just collapse. The second season is the season I call indicative season. Indicative season. The third season that I'm talking about, I want to talk about is your due season. These three seasons, as I've broken them down, they walk alongside each other. You cannot separate them. Now, let me go back to preparatory season. What do I mean by that? Everything in this life has a source. The air we breathe has a source. The food you eat, the food I eat has a source. It came from somewhere. Everything you do, the car you drive has a source. Somebody or some people made the car. The house you live in has a source. Somebody built the house you live in. So everything about life has a source, a beginning. Your preparatory season is your beginner's season, where it all started. If you want to be a medical doctor, the easy part of it would be to say, I want to be a medical doctor. There's nothing wrong with that. I respect doctors. I love doctors. You want to be a lawyer? There's nothing wrong with that. You want to be a midwife, a nurse, an accountant, an engineer, a teacher, a nursery nurse? Whatever thing, a security expert, that's good. That's what you want to be. That, that, that's a lofty ambition. But saying it is one thing. Actualizing it is another thing. So if I want to be a doctor, I've got to prepare my mind. I've got to prepare myself. I've got to take the necessary steps to be a doctor. In other words, I have got to go to primary school. I don't know what you call it, where you are. I've got to go to secondary school. I've got to go to university. I cannot finish primary school and declare myself a doctor. That is simple preparation. Primary school will prepare me for secondary school. Secondary school, like in UK, will prepare me for college. Then college will prepare me for university. Then I go to medical school. Then I go to do my, 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 my practical. I'm not a medical expert. I'm, I'm, I believe that's how it's done, especially here in UK. Then I qualify as a doctor. Let me talk as, as, as a lawyer here. You know, I went to primary school, secondary school, university, then law school, did my, did my uh, uh, training, then before I qualified, before I received the certificate. All of those had to do with preparation. So a lot of us jump from uh, uh, preparatory season into due season. It doesn't work like that. The foundation must be right. You must have a strong foundation. Preparatory season is a season you use to lay the foundation. Our marriages must have a strong foundation. Everything you do must be laid on a strong, solid foundation. That is your preparatory season. Let me tell us this now. Preparatory season is usually not the easiest of seasons. When others go to bed in the night and you stay extra hour, put in extra hour, studying, it's not easy. The body might not want it. When people are there playing games, wasting their time, you are there doing things, doing things, doing this, doing the extra going the extra mile. That is your preparatory season. It's not easy. It will not endear you to many friends. People may stay away from you because you are in your preparatory season. I call it seed uh, season, where you sow the seed, where you make the effort, where you get up early in the morning to pray. It is cold. You get up, you pray, you go out in the cold, you hop on the bus, you go to work, you, you do everything possible legally to bring food, to bring food home for your family. That is your preparatory season. It is hard. Usually not easy. People who don't understand will mock you. That's where people will mock you and try to discourage you. Why are you doing this? Preparatory season does take time. Why are you doing this? 
People will mock you. People will challenge you. People will abandon you. People will criticize you because they don't, they don't understand the season that you are in. I want to say to you, stay in your preparatory season and lay the foundations. You must lay the foundation. You must ignore what others are saying, what others are not saying. You must be consumed by your desire. You must be consumed by your desire to be the best. You must be consumed by your desire to get it right. You must be consumed by your desire to make it happen. Don't just dream, dream about it. Make it happen. Don't just say it. Make it happen. You want to be a doctor? I challenge you. Go through your preparatory season. Sit down and study. You want to be a nurse? Go through your preparatory season. Sit down and study. Do whatever it takes. Do what's necessary so that you be the best that God has chosen you to be. God made you the best. You are not an imitation. There is no other you in the whole world. If you're not there, there's no other you. People will try to imitate you, but nobody can do things the way you do. That is why you are so unique that you don't even know how unique you are. Stop waiting for people to praise you. Stop waiting for people to admire you before you admire yourself. Please, eh, 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 you know that people are trying to... to, to, to to, to get in touch with me. Don't, don't, allow, don't allow yourself to be carried away. In your preparatory season, you must stay focused. You must stay on track. You must have an idea of what you want. Then you must lay the foundation and make sure that the foundation is solid so that when the attack comes, the foundation stands. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me see. Let, 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 let me explain preparatory season. Let's go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Let's see John chapter 5, uh, verse 2 to 4. John chapter 5, verse 2 to 4. The Bible says, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem at the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. A pool that had so many people around it. Remember, I'm talking about due season. I'm talking about the stage one in seasons here, in case you just joined. I'm talking about preparatory season, that you can't do anything without adequate preparation. If you don't want it to end in failure, prepare adequately. Encourage your children to prepare adequately. The trouble we have in our world today is people prefer the, the shortcut to adequate preparation. Somebody, especially in Africa, somebody, uh, you are uh, an undergraduate, you don't sit there and study, maybe you pay off the lecturers. Some of them sleep with le lecturers to get the marks. You are deceiving yourself and you are deceiving your society because your society will not benefit from you because you have not taken time to sit down and study and know your, 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 your course very well and be a master in it so that you can use it to benefit yourself, your family and your society. You have chosen to take the shortcut. It is not right. You have not gone through your preparatory season. So the Bible said that in this lay different people. Where do you fit in here? Where do you fit in here? It says, verse 3, in this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, of hot, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Look at this now. Preparatory season, verse 4. Uh, for an angel went at a certain season into the pool. Went at a certain season into the pool. That's your preparatory season. An angel went down. That is the first thing the angel of God did was to go down at the pool. Preparatory season. It is important, ladies and gentlemen, that we prepare well. Prepare your family well. Get your family together. Prepare the church well. Believers to, well. 
teach them well, pastor. Teach them well, people in your department. Be the, the person that God has made you to be. Don't be a copycat. Don't be somebody's uh, 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 image. Don't carry somebody's image. You have the image of Christ already uh, on the inside of you. That should be enough. Don't, 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 don't go and begin to chop and replace your, your skin parts because some other person who goes by the next celebrity is doing, is doing the same thing. You, 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 are, you, you were bought with a price. So honor God with, with your body. Love, love God. Trust God. So the angel of God went down to the pool at a certain season. That is preparatory season. What did the angel of God go there to do? To prepare the ground for what will follow next. You see, what we do today could affect us tomorrow. What we do this year could affect us in the years to come. And that's why we must prepare well. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much you are educated, how much you have. There is need for us to prepare very, very well in everything that we do. Preparation is important. Athletes, there will be a time, a season where they go into training. They withdraw themselves, leave their families, their wives and their children behind. Maybe they move from England to Portugal, or they move from Portugal to Nigeria to South Africa, and they are training. Or they move from England to Kenya, high altitude. They, they, they are training, they are training, they are pushing their muscles, their bones, everything about them. They are training. That is simply preparation for the competition, for the task ahead. So whatever thing you're doing now, you are training. You're not seeing the result, but you are training. You are pushing yourself. People don't understand you, but you are training. You're pushing yourself. You're getting up early in the morning. You are running. You're studying. You're staying late. You're practicing. You are preparing the ground for better things to come. That's your preparatory season. So the angel of the Lord went down to, 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 uh, went down in a, at a certain season, preparatory season. Now here's the second thing. Now the indicative season. I did say I, I, I did break the season into three. I said preparatory season, indicative season, and due season. Here is the, in the, the indicative season. What do I mean by indicative season? Indicative season to, uh, simply means uh, God brings you to a point where you know that it is about to happen. The signs are there. You could see the signs. You have prayed. You have fasted. You have prayed. You have you have you have you have uh, 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 fasted. You know, so you ha you have prayed. You have fasted, and the Lord is saying to you, "You are about to get your reward. You are about to get your reward. That is your indicative season. The signs are there. You have laid the foundation. You have made the efforts." You have, you have paid the price. You have made the sacrifice. You have toyed. You have sown the seed. I, 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 I come from a, a farming background. My parents were farmers. I, I love them. God bless, God bless my dad. God bless the soul of my mom, who is no longer physically here with us. God bless them. They taught, taught us well. They taught me well. You know, I, 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 as, a, as a kid, I, I would see them always go to the farm. They, they, they were more or less experts in seasons. They know when to go to cut the grass. They, 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 they know when to set it on fire. They know when to go and, and, and put the crops uh, right there in the soil while waiting for the rain to come. Preparation, indicative season, and due season is important. You can't run away from it. Don't cut corners. Stop cutting corners. Your car is broken down. Instead of going to get it done, you cut corners. I said a friend of mine one day I said treat the car as part of the family. I don't have a dog. If I have a dog or a cat, I will treat the dog or the cat as a member of the family. Don't cut corners. Go and you know have your cat thoroughly serviced. Treat the car as a member of the family. Imagine you you have your wife and your children and you're driving the car in the middle of nowhere. The car breaks down, and it's because you are not taking adequate care of the of of. Of, of, of the car. So the angel of the Lord went down at a certain season, troubled the water. The indicative season there is the moment you notice that the angel of the Lord had troubled the water, you know that something is about to happen. 
I want to say to somebody right now, I want to say this to you now. Something good is about to happen to you. It doesn't matter the pandemic. It doesn't matter how much you are hated. It doesn't matter what people are saying. It doesn't matter how low your business is. It doesn't matter where, where the, 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 how remote your village is or your town is. It doesn't matter how many times you have tried and failed. Or to you, you have failed, but you have not failed. Because trying is your preparatory season. Or trying is in your preparatory season. Something is about to break for you. Something is about to break for you. There is a turnaround coming your way. You will give testimony and I congratulate you because there is something good coming your way. So the angel of the Lord troubled the water. The Bible says, let's, let's, let's read uh, 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 John 5, 2 to 4. Verse, 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 verse 5 now. It says, verse 4, And an angel of the Lord went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. Whosoever first, Whosoever was watchful, whosoever was attentive, whosoever was focused. The angel of the Lord did not call any person's name. The angel of the Lord did not push anybody into the pool. He said, whosoever. I want you to make yourself right now, whosoever. Be the first to jump into the pool of the blood of Jesus and get your healing. Be the first right now to jump into the pool of, of faith in Christ. And, and receive the blessing. Jesus still blesses today. It doesn't, look, I've gotten to a point where I do not care what folks say about Jesus. I do not care. I know what Jesus means to me. I know what Jesus has been doing for me. I know what Jesus has done for me in the past. This guy called Jesus, the master called Jesus, he has rescued me many times. I've seen myself in, in dungeons upon dungeons, in, in, in the fairy uh, furnace, in the lion's den, many, many, many times. I have seen him close the mouth of the lions. I have seen him go, go, go into the fairy, in, into the fairy uh, uh, furnace. Uh, he, he, uh, and he became the second person with me inside of the fire where the enemy circumstances uh, and situations have thrown me in. Jesus goes, goes there with me, make, cuddles me, make sure I, I don't get burnt. So I know that I love this Jesus. So don't tell me anything about him, anything negative about him because I'm not going to believe you. I've come to that point where I don't care what you say, what people say about Jesus. It is Jesus or nothing. There is no me without Jesus. Now you say, are you perfect? I'm not perfect. That is why I hold on to Jesus. I hold on to his mercy. I seek his forgiveness. I seek his presence every day. John the Baptist said that I will uh, decrease while he will increase. I want to decrease every day. I, 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 I ask him to increase in my life every day. Do I get it right all the time? No, I don't. Whosoever went into the pool, that is your due season. If you want that miracle, you must be, be where Jesus is. You must listen to him. You must be obedient to what Jesus is saying to you. If he says to you, jump into the pool. Be the first to jump into the pool. Go ahead and do it. Naaman nearly misses his miracle. I'm going to talk about Naaman some, some other day. But he nearly missed his miracle when he was asked to go and wash, I believe, in River Jordan or some other river. He nearly missed it because of arrogance until a kid talked sense into him. When Jesus said to you, do something, just go ahead and do it, you will not regret it. Even if he said jump, and even if you jump and as if you want to break your leg, he will give his angels charge over you. They will hold you and they will drop you down to where he wants you to be. Whoever, whosoever stepped into the pool was made whole. That is due season. I'm talking about your due season. Let, let's, let's, let's refresh a little bit. We started with Galatians 6, 9. He said, never you be wary of well doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Folks, don't receive because they stop nearer the end. They faint nearer the end. Come on, keep going. 
Keep pushing forward. Keep striving. Don't drop the baton. You have come a long way to give up now. Mommy, don't give up. Daddy, don't give up on, on, on that woman. She is, is she on her sick bed? Don't, this is not the time to run away from her. Daddy, don't, 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 don't give up on her. Come on. Go close. Hold her. She needs your attention. She needs your love. He needs your attention. He needs your love. Don't give up on him now. Don't give up. The, the, your due season is, is near. The, 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 your, your miracle hour is now. This is your moment to receive your healing. This is your moment to receive your breakthrough. This is your moment. You have toyed all night long. Peter said, he said, Master, we have toyed all night long. In other words, we have been through our preparatory season, yet nothing came out of it. Jesus said, drop, lay down your nets. The indicative season there was lay down your nets. Trust Jesus. Trust the word of God. This word, this word, this word, this word still works. It works. The Bible still works. It has worked for me. It will work for you. I depend on it. When I am troubled, when, when I'm concerned, when I'm terrified, when I'm fearful, when, I, when, when, when I'm happy, when I rejoice, when everything is going well, I hold on to this word. That's my source. Peter said to Jesus, nevertheless, at your word. Peter was tired. I know you may be tired now. You might, you might want to give up. Don't give up. Peter had toyed all night. This is somebody that, that had a PhD in fishery, whatever it is called. Peter understood the ins and outs of fishing. But he toyed all night. He, Peter and his mates, they didn't receive anything. There was nothing. Yet when Jesus said, cast down your nets, lay down your nets, don't faint, Peter. I want to say to somebody right now, don't faint. Don't faint. Don't faint. Don't give up now. Don't cease. Don't stop. This is not the time to quit. Don't quit. Don't faint, Peter. Peter said to Jesus, we have toyed, toyed all night. Are you, are you, have you toyed all night? Are you wondering whether it is worth it to follow the Lord? It is. Come on, lay down your nets. Go and pray again. Go and seek the Lord again. And when they obeyed the Lord, what happened? They had more than enough. Jesus is about giving us more than enough. I read something in the book of Daniel 1-2. The, the king had a dream. And the, and, the, and the dream disappeared. Imagine if, if, if somebody uh, has a dream, calls you in and says, you're a magician, astrologer, you're a soothsayer, you are a Mr. Somebody. I had a dream, but I've forgotten the dream. You need to remind me the dream, you need to interpret it. Or I chop your head off. I believe King Nebuchadnezzar did all that. The astrologers, the fake people are about, the soothsayers, every one of them fell. And the king said, all of you are dying. Daniel came, came, came forward. Daniel didn't just tap into his human wisdom. Daniel said, I love that. Daniel, Daniel called his mate and said, let us seek the Lord again. Let, let, let's go again to the Lord. Let's go, let's go to our source. Let's go to our source. Jesus is my source. Let's go to our source. Perhaps the Lord will give us the interpretation. The Lord will give us this dream. The Lord will give us the interpretation. Don't give up in that business. I know it is rocking. It's like a, a, a ship or a, a boat on, 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 on the high sea being, being, being uh, rocked left and right by, 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 by a deadly wind. Don't give up. Hold on to your source. Jesus is your source. He is my source. Let's go ahead. Let, 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 let's, let's, let's go ahead. If you must get to your due season, like I said, you dare not faint. You must embrace patience. You must be able to read situations. You must embrace patience. You must be able to read situations. You must put in the efforts. You must. Let's go ahead again. Let me, let's quickly go to uh, uh, Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. 
Matthew chapter nine. I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna point out the the, 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 the three seasons that, that 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 I have, I have, I have indicated. I want to point out to us the, the, the preparatory season where, where you lay the foundation, the indicative season where, where, where God gives you a sign that it is about to happen, that your prayers are about to be answered. Then your due season when your, your, your prayers are eventually answered. God still answers uh, uh, prayers today. Let's go to Matthew chapter 9 from uh, uh, verse 19 to, 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 to 22, I believe. Let me, let me be sure of that. Let me be sure of that. No, Matthew. Okay, let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 8. Verse, verse, uh, verse, um, verse 43. Luke 8, verse 43. Luke 8, verse 43. We're talking about due season. Luke 8, verse 43. The Bible says, And the woman, having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stenched. Okay, let's go to Matthew now. Matthew brings it out very, very well. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring something out in, 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 in Matthew. Matthew chapter 9, verse 19 to 22. Let's see. Let's see. I'm talking about this has to do with 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 uh, uh, the, the 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 woman with the issue with the issue of, of 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 blood. And Jesus arose, and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, verse twenty, Matthew Matthew nine twenty now. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Notice this. The woman said in, in, in Matthew, uh, I've gone to Matthew, Matthew 9, 20. I want to bring out preparatory season, indicative season, and due season. Look at what the woman said. Look at what the woman said. Indicative uh, uh, preparatory season. She came from behind. It doesn't matter how late you start. It doesn't matter how well you start. It is good to start well. It is good never to allow yourself to, 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 to be depressed. But the end justifies the means. This woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. For 12 years, she was pumping money, expending money, visiting doctor upon doctor upon doctor upon doctor. It got worse. I want to talk to somebody right now. You think your position has gotten worse. It's gotten worse and worse and worse and worse. I want to talk to somebody right now. And I want to say to you that there is hope in Christ. Bring that situation to Christ. I remember King Hezekiah. The king of Assyria had threatened, they wrote a letter, a threatening letter to him. Hezekiah was fed up, was tired, didn't know what to do. Hezekiah took the letter to the house of God and lifted it and prayed a prayer. And it's one of my favorite prayers in the scripture. He said, Lord, the child has come to birth, but there is no longer strength. If you are a woman, you have given birth. I'm, I, I'm not a woman, I've never given birth, but I've, I've had the privilege of having children, so I know a little bit about that. And when the nurses or the doctors say to you, push, when they say to you, push, that's your indicative season. That's, that is not the time to begin to play a game on your, on, your, on, your, on, your, on your iPhone. It's not the time for you to call a pastor or call your brother or your mom or anybody. When they say, push, you push. It is real. That's reality. That's your indicative season. You must push. You don't stop pushing. That moment, it is painful, but you don't stop pushing. I want to talk to somebody right now. You are in a painful place. It, 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 it does seem very painful. 
But you don't have to stop pushing. Keep going forward. Keep pressing forward. Keep going right now. People are leaving you walking away. Don't do don't do a salt. Wait for Samuel to come. People are leaving you there walking away. Keep pushing. You have God on your side. People have mocked you. Keep pushing. You have God on your side. Now, I'm going to talk to somebody right now, just like a, a, a woman that is about to, to give birth. They say, push. I want to challenge you right now. Push that dream out. Come on. Push that dream out. I, I, I want to agree with you in the name of Jesus that, that your dream now will come true. Push that dream out. Stop delay. You have, been, you have been in that spot too long. You have delayed it and delayed it and delayed it and delayed it. That plan, that project, that proposal. That agreement, that business idea, that business you want to start, you have delayed it and delayed it and delayed it. Push it out now. I, I, I challenge you, push it out. Come on, go ahead, push it out. Your decision is now. Your decision is this, this moment. You want to go to school? Come on, you want to do a PhD? Go ahead, the time is right. Don't look at the time. Don't look at the, 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 the situation in the world. Just trust God. Believe God that God will see you through it. Push that baby out now. Push that dream out right now. Push that love out of you. Push that forgiveness out of you. Push it out. Don't, 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 don't kill it. Don't, have, uh, uh, don't, don't, don't push it for, uh, into another day. Push, push that baby out now. That's your due system. Push the baby out. And the nurses will pick that baby. The nurses will pick that baby and, 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 put, it, and, and put it on your, on your, on your, on, on, on your chest. And you see the result of, 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 of the blessings of God to you. I am sorry, people are trying to, to reach me. So if you hear the sound of, of the phone, people are trying to connect uh, to me. I, I, I sincerely apologize. I don't want to touch anything. Maybe not be that I caught you uh, uh, short. So get that dream out. Let's move into something God has not planned for us. So this woman had the issue of blood for, for, for 12 years. She was planning and planning and planning and planning, fighting and fighting. It never, it, it, nothing happened. And she came where Jesus was. This is where some of us faint. She saw the crowd. A lot of us would have fainted, would have walked back and said, Oh no, look at the crowd. Oh no, I am, I am too small. Look at my height. Look at their heights. They are taller than, than, than I. They are bigger. They are richer. This and I am a nobody. Don't see yourself as a grasshopper in the sight of your enemies. Don't see yourself as a grasshopper in this world. If not, people are going to crush you. Stand your ground. You are a child of God. You are made in God's image. God loves you. I'm not saying that it's going to be an easy ride. But stand up. And go forward. Don't let anybody stop you. The woman, I don't know her height, but she said, If I may touch the hem of his garment. She came from behind. People were pushing, people were shoving each other, screaming, shouting at each other, pushing each other away. She came from behind. That's the preparatory season. She came from behind quietly. Then she made a statement, if I may touch the hem of his garment, indicative season. In other words, I am going to fight my way. I'm going to strive. I'm going to push. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to do whatever it takes, legally speaking, to get to where Jesus is. And if I can touch the hem of his garment, what do you say to yourself when it is not going well? What do you say to yourself when everything is working out well for you? How do you handle success? How do you handle failure? Have you failed? You think you have failed? Come on, pick yourself up again. Let's go again. Inject that energy. Get that energy back. Go again. Nobody's going to do it for you. You will do it for yourself. Come on, go again. Let's go again. Let's go again. You've done very well. You've done very, you've done very well to get this far. Come on, pick, it, pick yourself up again. Let's go again. Are you successful? What are you going to do to retain your success? That's a challenge. And then what are you going to do to be a blessing to the next person? Don't keep it all to yourself. Come on, be a blessing to somebody right now. Be a blessing. It is good to be a blessing. God said to Abraham, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. I want to be a blessing. I've not started blessing people. I know I can bless people better than I am doing now. So you pray for me while I pray for you. So the woman said, if I may touch the hem of his garment, 
indicative season. Something is about to happen. If, 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 if I'm able to persevere and touch the hem of the garment of Jesus, there's going to be a shift. Power shift. Wealth shift. And the church can persevere and go through this period. We are going to see a large influx of, un, uh, of unbelievers into the kingdom of God. If we can persevere, if we don't let this, this season, coronavirus season, as I put it, uh, kill us, bring us down, discourage us, dissuade us, tear us apart, stop what God wants to do uh, 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 this season with us and through us. If we don't allow this season, this season to damage us, we will come out stronger, better, and even bigger than this. The enemy wants to use this to slow us down. Of course, the devil has got to do what the devil has got to do. If I was the devil, I would even do worse than the devil is doing now. If you were the devil, you would do worse because I want somebody to go down with me. There is no forgiveness for Satan. So why wouldn't he want to take as many people as possible with him? That is why we got to persevere and let the devil know that even though you slay me, yet will I trust in the Lord, Job said. Oh, you want to talk about Job? Look at Job 42. And, and, that, and, that, and that will summarize it for you. So the woman said, if I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Her due season came after she had passed through her indicative season. Her indicative season came after she had passed through her preparatory season. She knew Jesus was walking through that way. Even if nobody invited her, she saw what was happening and she intentionally came. I want you to intentionally walk to Jesus. I want you to intentionally release somebody right now by loving them, by forgiving them, by tolerating them, by comforting them, by being there for them. They've been there for you, young man. You're too quick to move your mom from, 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 from your home into old people's home. Who's going to look after your mom? Who's going to look after your dad? Imagine if they had abandoned you when you were a kid. Where would you be today? Let us love our parents. Let us, I, don't care, I, I don't care how old they are. I don't care what they did to you years ago. You got to forgive them. They are, they are in the most vulnerable stage of their lives. You got to nurture them now. You got to... You got to, you, you, you got to Love them now. You, you got to provide for them. You got to make sure that the, their dignity, uh, their dignity, uh, come on, you know what I'm talking about. Preserve their dignity. Love your, love your, 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 your aging parents. You're going to get there someday. My dad is 91. Anytime I see him, you know, I'm filled with, with joy. I'm, I'm filled with happiness and, and I can't thank him enough for, for the person that I am today. I can't thank my mom enough for the person I am today. I'm not saying that I'm all that, but uh, hey, they, they have, they have they, they invested in me and it, it is now time for me to take care of them. I, I'm, I'm proud of my parents. I'm proud of my brothers and sisters. I'm proud of you. Don't abandon what God has placed in your hands. Don't, don't let that baby die in your hands. Look after your parents. Let's look after each other. Let's care about each other. It will make for a better world. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So the woman said, if I may touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And she went forth. She touched the hem of Jesus' garment and she received her due reward at her due season. Remember what I said. Preparatory season is when it all starts, when you start making the efforts. You start making the sacrifice, laying the foundation, studying, working hard, training hard. Whatever thing you're doing, you put in that effort, you put in that energy, you put in that time, you take care of it, you work on it, you review it. That's your preparatory season. You're only laying foundation for a better tomorrow. Then you move from your preparatory season to your indicative season. Indicative season is as a result of your efforts. Now, don't get me wrong. You might spend six months walking, toiling, and God may just take half a second to bless you. But it all starts from your preparatory season. You got to have some, something to present to God to bless. You got to have something to, to give to God. 
God is looking at you, looking at the efforts that you're making, the Bible in your hands, how many times you open it and read. Don't be a religious person that you only touch the Bible once in a week. Only when the pastor is preaching or when you're going to a, a building where the church gathers. You take, you take the Bible and you come back, you, you, you polish it, uh, 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 put it somewhere. Not to, uh, maybe put a note, don't touch. And that's not what the Bible is there for. The Bible is a weapon of Satan destruction. I call it a weapon of demon destruction. Use the Bible, use the word of God in the Bible, and you will see the difference in your life. So finally, finally, I'm going to, I'm going to be stopping. I want to take us to, 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 to the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. I want, to, I want to bring out preparatory season, indicative season, and due season. Uh, um, let's go. 1 Kings 18, 41 to 45. If you want to expand on this message, please expand. If the Lord gives me grace to expand on it some other time, I will do that. I'm talking about due season. Uh, 1 Kings 18, 41 to 45. Where is, where is it? Let me see. 41 to 45. Okay. And Elijah said to Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Preparatory season. Elijah said to Ahab, we know the story. Elijah had spoken and said, except by my word, there will be neither rain nor dew, except by, by my word. For three and a half years, nothing happened. And then the Lord sustained Elijah. God will sustain you. Don't you worry. Then when it was time, God released Elijah to King Ahab. Elijah said to King Ahab, look, get thee up, eat and drink. In other words, rejoice. There is a sound of abundance of rain. That's preparatory season. Elijah, King Ahab, you have wondered. You have been without rain for quite a long time. I want to say to somebody, I want to prophesy to somebody right now, you have been without something that you desire so much, something that you have prayed for for so long. And I want to say to you right now that I hear a sound of victory coming your way. I hear a sound of rejoicing coming your way. I hear a sound of a turnaround coming your way. I hear a sound of praise coming your way because God, the time, the season is now. The time for your reward is now and God is about to reward you. God said to, uh, the, 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 God spoke to Elijah and say, said to King Ahab, there's a, 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 a sound of abundance of rain, preparatory season, indicative season. Verse 44. Let's go to verse 44. I'm, the, I'm, I'm rushing it a bit because of time. Indicative season. Remember, preparatory season, sound of abundance of rain is your preparation. The rain is about to fall. Get yourself ready. Uh, uh, Elijah was saying to King Ahab, God is about to bless you. Get yourself ready for the blessings of God. God is about to bless you. God is about to turn things around for you. Get yourself ready for the blessings of God. Verse 44 now. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, here ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. That's indicative season. There arises a little cloud. There arises a little cloud. Indicative season, like I said before, is a season whereby you begin to see the signs that something is about to happen. Signs that things are changing. Signs that the fever has, is, 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 is about to go. Signs of change. That's your indicative season. It's not your full season yet, but it is a good sign that, so, that, that something is about to change for you. I see a hand, a hand. First of all, I hear a sound of abundance of rain, preparatory season. Get ready for abundance of rain. Get ready. God is about to shower you with his blessing. Then a sign, there is, there arises a little cloud, a little cloud. That's your indicative season. Let's go to verse 45. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heavens was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Due season. The rain has now arrived. 
I have the rain caught you unprepared. The blessings of God has just arrived in your home. It is your due season. What are you going to do with the abundance of rain? What are you going to do with the blessings of God? What are you going to do with the presence of God in your life? What are you going to do now that God has healed you? What are you going to do that now that God has given you the Samuel that you've been praying for? God has revived your ministry. God has anointed you again. God has revived your business. What are you going to do now that God has given you a reconciliation? A peace of mind. Now that God has answered your prayer, it is your due season. Don't run away from God. Don't use your victory to suppress others. Don't use your victory to mock others. Don't think you got it out of your, your physical strength. Except the Lord build a nation. Those that build, they build in vain. I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I want to thank you for 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 for. Uh, for your time. It's been a pleasure uh, having you uh, uh, around me, uh, listening to me. I'm sorry if I've uh, uh, take, taken your time. I'm so sorry. I want to give a shout out quickly to, to, to my dear friend and sister. She calls me spiritual uncle. <laughs> uh, sister Joanna, um, the Mago Day Ministries. Mago Day Ministries is a brilliant ministry. If you're in Warsaw, Poland, Pastor James, it's a brilliant man of God, a Mago Day ministry. Uh, the, the truth is that I can't pronounce the place. You know, Polish language is so sweet, it's so good, but I can't, you know, get it pronounced. But Mago Day Ministries is in, is in Warsaw, uh, Poland. I've been there a couple of times. Nice people, wonderful people, uh, wonderful man of God. I want to thank you, uh, Mago Day Ministries, uh, for, for being a, a partner in this journey. I am a product of Living Word Ministries. I, I got saved. At Living Word Ministries some 30 years ago. How time flies. Our church is still the same. Uh, my name is Pastor Darlington. I am of Greater Love Assembly. Please invite somebody, take somebody to church if, if, if the law allows it where you are this Sunday. Uh, take somebody to church. If you live in London, in East London, in Newham, in Forest Gate, uh, please come, 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 come fellowship with us. Come fellowship with us. If you're black, come the way you are. You're white, it doesn't matter. You're red, you're green, you're brown, purple, orange. Come the way you are. You have clothes, come. Don't, don't come to, to please anybody. We don't compete in our church. Mm -mm. We don't compete. You don't need to have a money suit or Gucci, Louis Vuitton, anything to, to be accepted, accepted in our church. Just come in. You, you have people, 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 people like, like, uh, 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 people like you uh, with him. If you want to write to me, that's fine. Write uh, 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 Pastor Darlington, uh, Greater Love Assembly, Transition Ministries, Downing Hall Complex, D U R N I N G, Downing Hall Complex, uh, that's in Forest Gate, um, London, E79AB. I am blessed. I am done for the day. I want to thank you once again. Come and fellowship with us. We meet Fridays, 6.30 p.m. for prayer meetings and Sundays, 12.30 p.m. for fellowship. Come enjoy Jesus with us. Thank you, Sister Joanna. Thank you, everybody. God bless you and God keep you. Thank you for your time. I love you a lot and I am praying for you. Thank you. Goodbye.